I did actually curate the order of this to make sure we got to the important or, or, or up to date topics right away. And the first one is there was a really big earthquake last night. I mean, it was seriously big. It was a 7.3 magnitude. Apparently, there were two quakes detected, which is actually what happened when we had the magnitude nine in 2011. There were actually it was rather than one enormous nine earthquake. Um, remember that the magnitude is a measure of the amount of energy in the quake. So it's like the size of the bomb, but you know, the amount of damage it felt depends on where you are and how close you are to it and how far underground it is and so on. But the, the magnitude nine in 2011 was in fact five separate like cascading uh, magnitude seven earthquakes. And so all the energy, because magnitudes go up exponentially, all the, all the combined energy released by those five combined quakes that all triggered one after the other was an M9. This was two M7s, which ended up going from an M7 to an M7.3. It was really big. Another thing that I learned in 2011 is that you can tell how big an earthquake is in terms of magnitude, uh, which is, you know, in terms of the total energy, even if it's like you're really far away and the shake isn't very much, the duration that the quake lasts for is an indication of how much energy is in the quake. Uh, i.e. you know the longer it goes uh, the bigger it is and, and presumably if it goes for a long time that means somewhere wherever is close to where the epicenter is is going to be really messed up and the quake last night was a long quake that was the biggest longest quake japan has had since 2011 and that quake lasted for by my count nearly two minutes certainly well over a minute um, and uh, yeah, here in Tokyo, it just started with a, it was like a jutter. It was a bouncy quake, and then it sort of settled into sideways. Apparently, it's interesting. This was the same size as the Kobe earthquake. Um, the reason that this one uh, didn't do as much damage as the Kobe earthquake, I mean, no fatalities. Only in Japan could you get a magnitude 7.3 quake near major cities and have no one die. It's a good thing. The reason that there were um, that there was much less property damage, there was property damage, but there weren't like collapsed houses everywhere like there were in Kobe. Apparently, uh, a significant thing about this quake was the frequency, the actual uh, shakes per second. Uh, during the Kobe quake, it was roughly one shake per second. It was a dun, dun, dun. Do. Whereas this one was more short and stuttery, which is apparently a, that that will cause retaining walls uh, and so on to collapse, and uh, you know statues and things to fall over. It's like a, a shuddery quake, but it won't actually damage buildings as much as when you have a longer shake. So apparently that's the reason that although there are lots of landslides, it, it dislodged land and you know lots of walls fell over. Um, houses stayed intact, although people commented uh, actually particularly around Fukushima, which. Um, this is the original quake in 2011 was up uh, further up the coast towards Miyagi. People are saying that this felt as big and did as much damage as the earthquake um, in 2011. It was bigger there. Um, certainly the places that experienced the um, the, the um, Shindo Japanese shaking scale six plus here in Tokyo. It was a solid four. Four is scary. Four is making lots of noise, doors moving and, and getting to the point also because it was a long quake. And you can feel it changing gears like a car crashing through gears. It was, uh, yeah, I, I definitely jumped up and propped open doors uh, because that's the fear. If you're in a big building and it's like more than a Shindo 5, um, it can cause structural damage to a building where doors can get jammed closed. And, you know, you don't want that situation. So, yeah, it was enough. It was at 11 p.m. It was at this time last night and it was enough to make me get up and go and uh, open all the doors. Um, yeah, scary thank heavens that there was uh that, that there were no fatalities and you know japan did do pretty well although there's a lot of places without electricity a lot of property damage a, a large number of people injured including some people seriously injured but um as things go i mean it could have been a lot worse this is the old japanese shaking scale uh, i i explain it from time to time in tokyo I, it, by my feeling it was between a lower five and a four um certainly the shake maps came out it was a four where i was um, just as a general indication, normally one you, you wouldn't even notice uh, unless you're paying really close attention. Two, you might notice if you're sitting down, you might not notice if you're walking around. Three is a tremor, what we get probably a couple of times a month here in Tokyo. Um, you know, it's, it's something that's noticeable, it's a quake. You might not notice it if you were like running or driving a car, but you'll probably notice it in most circumstances. And it's kind of like, oh, what's that? But it's not scary. Um, four is scary. Four is where you've got noise and shaking and stuff like that. And it makes you think, oh, this could be really bad. Um, but no real damage sort of happens, minor things fall over, but probably nothing very much. When you get into the fives and sixes, that's when stuff starts to get damaged. You know, stuff will normally start to fall over. Books and bottles will fall over at a lower five. At an upper five, 
Um, buildings not designed for earthquakes are at risk, so there are upper five quakes, which where, where you know old buildings have collapsed and so on. Lower six and upper six are where even reinforced buildings will experience damage, um, and this was an upper six in a lot of places. This is really widely felt. Um, so again, the reason that buildings were not as damaged as in the Kobe quake was due to this particular type of shaking that occurred. And seven is just, you know, off the scale. Uh, it would, would, would break and damage everything. And there were places that had seven during the 2011 quake, and that's just ridiculous. Um, interesting thing about this one as well was um, it happened out to sea, as you can see, but there was no tsunami from this. Uh, apparently the deal with that was that, you know, there were different types of quakes. This was... Um, this wasn't uh, the entire, th this happens from the Pacific plate going under the Asian plate. The, uh, apparently what happened in 2011 was everything was like the, the coiled up spring was springing back and it was causing the actual sea floor itself to suddenly jump up all over the place. This quake was actually happening like on the Asian, uh, on, on the Pacific plate, but way under underground, um, underneath the Asian plate, not under the sea. So it, it was basically happening uh, in an already subducted piece of plate. So apparently they, they knew right away that there was no tsunami risk and they said that, which which is fa it's still fascinating, but it's just crazy how frequent these things are. It's a good reminder if you are coming to Japan. I mean, quakes, serious quakes are a 100% certainty anywhere in Japan, uh, but particularly uh, Tokyo and, you know, all, all, all the stretch where we have frequent earthquakes right now. And it's another reminder if you're living here, or frankly anywhere, even if you're in a place that doesn't have earthquakes, or, you know, I mean, pretty much everywhere gets some sort of natural disaster. Remember, have an emergency kit, have a battery-powered radio, light, uh, batteries. Um, you know, um, normally you can buy them at, at hardware stores and so on, or you can look online for packs, or whatever, get one from, you know, whatever online site you shop from. Um, but you should definitely have an emergency pack around, just uh, you never know when this is going to happen. Hey, Foghart, good to see you, Stormtrooper 109. Um, I just remembered I'm, I'm segmenting, I'm staying on topic, but uh, yes, stay safe everybody, certainly if you're in uh, Tohoku, uh, I hope everyone is okay, remember this can happen anywhere if you're in Japan, and uh, yeah, yeah, could have been a lot worse, so uh, that was scary, and that happened last night.